A recent study by the CDC reports that rapid COVID tests are less accurate than initially thought, especially when it comes to pre-symptomatic or asymptomatic people. And those tests are very likely to get used more frequently as a way to try and reopen restaurants and other businesses. So that comes as a little bit of concerning news. Right now, we're going to bring in former FDA Commissioner Dr. Scott Gottlieb. He currently serves on the boards of both Illumina and Pfizer, and he's, of course, also a CNBC contributor. And Scott, I have to say, I, I'm interested in this, especially because my family's been through it in the last two weeks in two separate instances where we had three uh, false positives, we had inconclusive tests, we had all kinds of things that went on. I was surprised at how inaccurate some of these tests are and just didn't realize it. I mean, we, we knew that there were problems with these things. The White House was testing people when they had that super spreader event for Amy Comey Bar Barrett. But I didn't realize just how inaccurate some of these tests are. What, what can you tell us? Yeah, that's right. Uh, when you're talking about some of these rapid tests, these antigen tests, they're not um, especially sensitive. They will generate a higher rate of false positives than the PCR-based tests. So we need to make sure we're using the test for an appropriate purpose and also that we're doing the appropriate things with the test result. Um, I do think that there's virtue, there's benefit in doing serial screening in certain settings with some of these tests, but we need to recognize that if we're screening an asymptomatic population, we're going to miss infections. That CDC study you mentioned um, said upwards of two-thirds of infections were missed when they were screening an asymptomatic population. You're also going to generate false positives. So what does that mean? Well, if you're using a screening test for a place like a school it, it, where you're going to have a lot of people who may have asymptomatic infection, it means you still have to put in place mitigation steps. You still have to wear masks and distancing. You can't rely on a test entirely to try to create a protective bubble around that environment. And it also means that when you have a, when you have a positive, you're going to need to verify it. You can't, with every positive test, you can't obligate a lot of people to quarantine and, and long isolations. You need to have a way to quickly verify that test with a PCR-based test. So you need to be able to reflex to a more um, definitive test very quickly. There's ways to do that. And so I think the challenge is the way that we're using these tests, not necessarily the tests themselves. Well, let's talk about the tests, though. The way they're being used right now, they are, are wrong more than half of the time. How, how is that something that is useful at all? Yeah, with an, if you're screening an asymptomatic population with an antigen-based test, you may get a result like that. You may miss upwards of 50 percent of infections, and, and you may get about 50 percent false positive rate. About half the uh, positives that you get may be false positives. In terms of missing infections, if you're serially screening a population, if you may miss an infection on one day, you'll pick it up the next day. So if you're, you're doing serial screening on an uh, asymptomatic population to try to prevent infection from being in, introduced into that environment, the test can still be valuable, even if they're not that sensitive, even if they're missing infections. Now, again, it's important that you don't rely on the test to try to create a protect, protective bubble. And that's what the White House did. They had antigen-based tests that weren't entirely accurate. They did miss asymptomatic infections. But once you got inside the White House compound, you were basically free to roam and you could behave as if you didn't have uh, coronavirus. They still had to take steps inside that compound. They couldn't rely entirely on that test. And then on the other side of the equation, if you generate a positive result, you've got to be able to confirm that very quickly. Because if you're going to obligate someone to isolation because of that positive result, if you're going to quarantine a class, let's say, because you're using it in a uh, school setting, you need to have a way to confirm whether or not that positive was, in fact, positive. So what does that mean? Well, maybe have PCR-based testing on site where you confirm positive results. If that's too expensive, have a lab that you can go to to get a definitive test. The Cephi Gene Expert is a PCR-based test that's very accurate. You could send someone to go get that test, but you need to have that set up in advance. You can't have someone have to go out and search for a PCR test to try to confirm that positive result. You have to set it up and be able to reflex that person to that kind of testing right away. All right. Let me give you my cynical view on this whole thing. I mean, there are still some urgent care centers where they'll tell you you'll get your PCR results back in five to seven days. That seems completely useless to me. Nobody really seems to be saying about when you should be relying on these rapid antigen tests and when you shouldn't. And I get the sense it's because there's a lot of money that's being made on them. People charge or companies will charge you 100 to 250 dollars to get one of these rapid tests. There's not a lot of um, reason for anybody in the industry to stand up and say, hey, wait a second, these aren't all that accurate. I also feel like there's just not a lot of information out there. Explain why my cynicism is, uh, is maybe the wrong way of looking at this. Well, look, not entirely unfounded. The test should be less expensive than that. Some of the tests like the Binex now coming into the market cost about $5 each. What actually is happening right now is some of the manufacturers that make these antigen-based tests are actually actively discouraging the tests from being used <laughs> 
to screen an asymptomatic population precisely because they're getting back um, inconclusive results, false positive, and it's besmirching the tests themselves. And so you're getting a reluctance now to move these tests into our steer settings, into home-based testing. So I think it's the problem isn't necessarily the test. We have to understand the performance characteristics of the test and use it in an appropriate way. I think it's the way that they're being used. If you get a, a positive result with an antigen-based test, you need a way to rapidly confirm that result. You shouldn't have to wait, to your point, five days to go get a PCR-based test and get that result back while someone sits in isolation and maybe a whole classroom sits in quarantine. So if a school's going to be using it, they need to set that up in advance. They need to have that available. There are ways to do it. They're just not doing it. So I don't think they're using the tests appropriately. They could be very valuable in even screening an asymptomatic population. Even a partially predictive, predictive test could be very helpful if it's used the right way. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.